Today, it's Edwin's Property Rant on a Monday. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. And I'm joined again by Edwin Almeida for the first in his series of Monday Property Rants. Hi, Edwin. G'day, Martin. Um, I thought I'd support the, um, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the 1960s look by the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a haircut. I haven't had time. Just been training out today, uh, and also doing a bit of training. Didn't have time to blow my hair for the show. I'm sorry. I just have to apologise. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether I should comment about it or not. So I'm glad that you did. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, you know, actually, I'm trying to trying to emulate your look, mate. Well, you'd have to work a bit harder. I can t yeah. I can tell you that um, I, you know I spend a lot of time. No, I spend no time at all. <laughs> but it's interesting how often um, the comments on YouTube refer to your coiffure. You know, it's obviously well. A that's, very... that's what I thought. Uh, I thought I'd make. A, yeah, started off start off our property Monday's property rants with uh, with that in mind, and also uh, there was something else that got brought up uh, a number of times uh, in, from the last podcast that we did, and that was with regards to. I refer to mortgages. Now, the reason why I refer to home loans as mortgages is because, you know, when you look at the Latin translation, I understand that to be, uh, you know, uh, a, a mortgage being a, a death sentence, a life sentence of death, really. So most people have got that, unfortunately. Correct. And a few it, it, yeah, exactly. The Latin meaning is effectively a death pledge. So basically, until you die, you owe. <laughs> That's it. A death pledge to, to your masters, the banks and the RBA. You know, the RBA. <laughs> So I, I guess there's a few things to touch on tonight, but the first one I think is a really important article in the AFR, right? Because obviously, the, you know, the AFR is the banker's rag, as, as, as right? But they've come out with a really interesting angle on the fiscal cliff. Well, they have. They uh, called me over the weekend and, uh, yeah, surprise, surprise. They, 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 look, I, I keep on saying, they, yeah, they, they're watching our tweets, Martin. So uh, they must uh, they get a lot of joy out of my uh, on the ground uh, auction you know, auction tweets and uh, look I've known Ingrid for 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 a while since where, since when she was back with uh, with Domain one of the better reporters there and um, but um, yeah so uh, they they asked to they they're really interested and keen on knowing what's happening on the ground right so what is happening on the ground what is going on. Well, no, uh, as I reported uh, on the AFR, as I made comments uh, with uh, with that article that you alluded to, uh, and that is there are a number of there are a number of certain trends that are uh, appearing. One of which is, uh, as I was saying to Ingrid, is that zing, that emotional zing has, uh, you know, in a lot of the cases, not all the cases, but in a lot of the cases, has pretty much disappeared. The the buyers are more calculated. Uh, the even the the Chinese uh, buyers uh, that you know a lot of people somehow you know been fearful of um, they they you know the ones that from mainland China even Hong Kong that are that have been here have got the PR here and they can buy uh, a secondary uh, uh, or established property you know even even they are more calculated the um, interestingly one of my colleagues that actually speaks uh, Mandarin and Cantonese in one of the previous auctions. Um, yeah, caught on to one of the conversations by one of the parties that attended, and, and um, yeah, one of them said, "Oh, how much the, does this person want for the house?" And that was you know, a few weeks back, and and um, the house was on the market, yeah, you know, for uh, uh, with a guide of two point five, and and this party uh, said to the other party, said two point five, said they've got to be mad. So we don't, we don't we don't get the mainland Chinese here anymore. You know, before when, when you know, twelve months ago when they were arriving, you could put any shit on the on a uh, auction and you get to you know two point five to three million even on the main road. So all that sentiment's gone. That zing has has very much disappearing. Uh, there are less people um, w willing to buy, and if they are buying, they 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 are well below the guides. Uh, and then just a couple of uh, of things that are that are happening are very evident. You get a lot of you get a lot of looksies. You get a lot of people, the neighbours in particular, that want to have a look. Uh, but as of Wednesday, the um, social distancing uh, regulations have changed uh, with regards to uh, attendees at an auction. They can only uh, the 
the area, the, the real estate agents can only have 20 parties at um, 20 people at an auction in social distancing. So that's going to they're going to keep a tight tighter fist on uh, on that side of things. So that's going to take away a, a little bit more emotion and that that the perception that there's a lot of people that there are a lot of players out there you know, wanting to buy and and there's still a frenzy. <laughs> Yeah, and we should say you're talking really about the area that you know very well, which is effectively the uh, you know suburban areas around Sydney, right? But um, there are different trends, of course, in other places. You know, Victoria is pretty pretty quiet at the moment. Uh, some of the other regional centres may be a little different. I was l uh, listening to somebody talking about the Gold Coast, claiming that it was booming on the Gold Coast and all these foreign buyers were coming and buying sight unseen and all those things. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, well, maybe. Not seeing it in the data. No, and I think they're still being promised. Uh, I think the, um, the the Queenslanders are still promising uh, the, the rest of the, uh, the the investors from Australia that there's going to be a uh, an airport set up around Ipswich, and they, haven't they been saying that for the last thirty years since I've been involved with property? <laughs> That's been one of the it's you know, one of the perpetual of Ipswich, of Red Hills, and all that. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So um, it's interesting that we're still getting very different auction clearance results whether you look at Domain, whether you look at CoreLogic or whether you look at SQM, I tend to think SQMs probably get the best handle on what's really going on and their clearance rates are way lower than the other guys. Now, yeah, look, uh, they, they, they do have a much uh, better handle on things and, and because uh, Louis Christopher has been very, uh, in previous, yeah, over the years, he has been uh, more conscientious uh, uh, a person, a party that w wants to report uh, on, on what's actually happening. And I think the closer we can get to the truth, the better it's going to be for, for everybody you know, in tow. Uh, because for keeping keeping people in the dark is certainly not the way to go, not the way to move forward. And as I keep on saying over and over again, Martin, and that is that the, the two major property portals have got the richest form of data uh, to, to supply to the general public and to put it out there, but they, they won't. And it takes people like Tarek, you know, uh, avid commentator, for those that want to follow him on Twitter, he's got some absolute gems, uh, uh, you know, articles that, that he put, puts out there and, and some grabs. I mean, he's, he's researched, um, you know, for the last two years how the correlation of, you know, the, 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 the smoke and mirrors uh, reporting that's happening in the mainstream media, how, how that correlates to property prices going up and, or, in this case, property prices going down because they obviously want to cloak what's really happening out there. And that's what I like to do with my colleagues uh, and myself uh, on the ground is is let the public know what's really happening, the sentiment that's really out there, and I've, and it's not looking very good. Uh, and then, of course, I've got the privilege of being able to get onto uh, other uh, portals and other um, uh, other uh, sources of information, and one of them being obviously Core Logic uh, with the delayed data, and I can compare what the hedonic uh, propagates as to what really happens on the ground, which is absolutely you know uh, we're worlds apart. Right. Well, maybe we'll, let's go and explore that because you've got a couple of real examples, right, of where effectively the core logic recommended price was a million miles from what actually happened. Yeah. So we've got uh, uh, at number twelve Avian that, um, that yeah your viewers will see and that you put up there, and it, it's interesting how the, the the agent was guiding on that at uh, one point six, and you know uh, five bedroom house. Mm -hmm. Uh, real nice setting. Now, I, you know, just to be to, to get on the record, I actually attended and I inspected uh, the the other property that we're also going to talk about, and I attended uh, number uh, n number twelve uh, with with one of my clients because he was interested in in the property. Now, uh, we looked at the floor plan, we looked at the layout, we looked at the the, the structure, we looked at you know trying to compare apples with apples with regard to um, you know, because he was going to make a, a, a big decision. Uh, you know, if he if he walked away with the property, so we're, we're looking at that. And now we also know that if you bring up the number uh, eighteen on the same on the same street in the same suburb, now I've also went through that property. I attended that for uh, at auction at that time. We weren't looking in the Lane Cove region for this particular client, but we went there just to uh, myself and one of my colleagues. We went there just to to you know, to get a feel of the area, to get a, a sense of what was happening. And this auction was about uh, you know, five weeks ago. 
uh, it got passed in at uh, this number 18 got passed in at 1 million eight, uh, sorry 1 million 650 at the time uh, it was bought for a couple of years prior for 1 million 610. They spent about $100,000, $120,000 in renovations. So therefore, they really needed one point eight in order to, to, to come out uh, clean, you could say. So they did a lot of work. But at the end of the day, it's still a three-bedroom house. Um, you know, it uh, had an upgraded kitchen and, and the like. But it's a much smaller floor plan than number 12. Uh, and the the landscape, the topography, the the actual the actual uh, land envelope is very um, uh, um, you know not not family friendly at all. So when you're comparing apples with apples, and you compare number eighteen to number to number twelve, um, that got sold on the weekend at uh, for one thousand uh, sorry one million six hundred and sixty thousand, um, you know it got sold, and being a five bedroom. Uh, Five bedroom, yeah, two two point five bathrooms, a much better floor plan, much bigger house, much more solidly built home, and the the land envelope a lot friendly, a lot more usable. So, and, and it sold for one million six hundred and sixty. Now, my understanding is that, and from the um, the word on the streets and and the inquiries that we made, that number eighteen uh, was sold a few weeks ago for for one point eight. So there's, that's where the market is going. Uh, it's it's not going north at all, as as some would uh, be reporting. I don't see it. I can't see it. And, you know, in this particular case, the guide was very much on point. The agent's a solid agent from Century 21. Um, and, you know, he wasn't underquoting it. But the, the hedonic was showing uh, 2175000 as uh, you know, with high confidence as the sale price on the day, which is ridiculous. It's way over uh, overvalued, and I just really don't understand how how you know a lot of the mainstream is still re re relying on or relying on uh, on on this type of um, information that's put out there. They don't upgrade their system, and if they do upgrade it, as I said, there's there's a sixty to seventy two day lag. Yeah, right. So what you're saying is that the indicative price which of course is based on algorithms and uh, you know we don't know what's in the black box nobody knows um well somebody hopefully knows but not not in the public domain at least um is often suggesting the prices are way higher than actually the achieved prices and i guess there's a question edwin as to whether there is an, an underquoting thing going on by agents in other words is the index right or is it more likely that the agents are right and the index is wrong and I suspect you're going to tell me that you think the index is actually just a bit optimistic. <laughs> the index is very optimistic in a lot of the cases. But let me say this, and let me put this out as a warning to my uh, colleagues in, uh, you know, uh, that, that do follow you and, and do comment and do give us um, thumbs down on uh, on the YouTube videos. You know, uh, there, there is a lot of underquoting going on. I can I, I can see it. I can tell. Uh, you know, I, I know how to sniff it out. I've been in the industry long enough to know, and I've spoken about underquoting long enough to know. But this, this is the warning: if you if that that underquoting strategy is not going to work, it's not going to work. It's not working, and it's not going to work in the in the near future. And and you're not going to do your vendor any a, a, any justice by underquoting, thinking that you're going to get a lot of people at the auction, as they say, yeah, you know, price it low and watch it uh, watch it go. What's happening, Martin, is. Uh, no different to to what I do. If the guide is uh, is to you know, one of the properties that I went to that I attended for another client uh, on the weekend, the other guide was uh, it started at two point three, then it went down to two point two, then it went down to two point one. Well, I started the auction at one point eight. Um, you know, um, there was there wasn't any other any other bid uh, other than mine at the time. There was a little bit of a lag in you know the, with the auctioneer trying to get um, trying to get other other people to to chime in. So what happened was that, you know, all going low. Now, if, you know, the agent was guiding 2.1 because the owner wanted above, wanted around uh, 2.1. Now, obviously, he kept it high, He kept it high. Now, what a lot of people do, Martin, is they, they would have, uh, other agents, the unscrupulous ones, would have been guiding that property at, you know, 1.9 to get a lot more parties in there to, to bid for it and to, and to try to... Uh, Create that emotion. Create that sense of oh, I'm going to miss out. You know, more, more, more people involved, more emotion. You know, uh, more things that, that that go on. So, um, so when agents 
do that. And I have seen it in other properties where they do uh, guide it low, much lower than what the what, what the vendors want. They do get the crowds. They are getting the crowds. But guess what? The bidding will often start way below the guides. Uh, you know, they're starting way below the guides, even if they are guided properly, but they're starting, they will start and they won't move much higher than that. So, you know, the ones that lose out are the vendors. Mm. Uh, and, you know, at, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, they've chosen the wrong agent and they've chosen the wrong strategy to uh, to, to adopt in order to, to try and sell one of the most valuable assets. Yeah, well, it's interesting because one of the things that I've been looking at recently is the difference between the asking price and the settle price, right? And it's interesting that the gap is opening up even more. So because of the fact, as you said, the markets are a little less um, uh, buoyant these days, uh, a lot of prices ultimately end up significantly below even the asking price, even the asking price is you know, low to start with. And that's another reason why a lot of prices are now not being disclosed when things are sold. I mean, it ama amazes me when you go and have a look around, you know, there's, no, we're not going to tell you about that, we're not going to tell you about that, right? There's just no information about what that price was. So another interesting observation then. So that information doesn't get into any of the um, available information to the public for at least three months or so because you've got to go through settlement and then it goes into the land registry and it comes out and... Um, so, in a way, the lack of disclosure on prices is actually also a bit of a deceit, isn't it, in terms of actually not wanting to tell the bad news more broadly? No, that's right. And uh, but look, there are people, again, once again, there are people like Tarek, and um, yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, research in that particular area, and he's got a lot of time to, yeah, he's got a lot of knowledge in, 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 in that ground. He puts out some, some yeah, very simple, very very uh, easy to understand graphs and, and, and information. And as I said, a lot of people need to, more people need to follow him and, and to get, get an idea. I mean, to, to analyse, I think you analyse something like 50,000 um, uh, yeah, property transaction or auction trans, uh, auction uh, uh, over the last few years in order to come up with his graphs and with his data and how he correlates with uh, non-disclosure of price or disclosing prices when properties are going up in value. And as I said, it's it's really, this is really how we're going to uh, shine the light on what's hap what's really happening. And like we said in the in our last show, Martin is is it's important for people to know what's happening in order to be able to prepare themselves a lot better for you know for, for what's happening in the future, rather than 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 uh, believing in the in, in this tooth fairy, believing in this property fairy that's going to get them out of that's going to get them out of trouble. You know, stop listening to. To these thin bats that that uh, uh, create uh, podcasts and create articles that sit in a sit in a two bedroom apartment or three bedroom apartment in Queensland in the in the, in the Gold Coast and write uh, and write articles on you know or, or indexes with regards to uh, how many people are looking on on real estate. I mean, stop it! Just simply uh, stop it. Just you know, get on. You know, follow us on Twitter. And um, uh, as I said, particularly Tarek, because he's got some awesome information that comes out, uh, and and you know I can steal it from time to time because because he because you know we follow each other on Twitter. <laughs> well, no, we'll uh, make sure that the links and stuff are below. Final question for today, Edwin, is spring selling season. Now, there's a little interesting observation. In fact, CoreLogic came out today and said that the listings or pre-listings were going up. Um, What's the real story with regard to the spring selling season? Is it happening? Is it not happening? Interesting. The, uh, that was one of the things that I also brought out with Ingrid on the AFR, and that is that all we need, Martin, is what we need uh, two to three more properties in, in each suburb in Sydney, and there's about 600 suburbs in, in Sydney and 40 LGAs. But if we're looking at uh, two to three more properties, uh, in, when I say properties, I say I'm talking about freestanding homes to come on the market for sale, and you and I spoke about the the, the many different um, uh, in, indicators that could possibly drop those uh, for sale listings on the market, mm. uh, retirees, overseas investors, and the like. We won't go too much into detail on that now, but that's going to change. That's going to have <coughs> change uh, this landscape dramatically, and we are going to go off the cliff well and truly. Uh, I feel because things have stagnated already, and the reason why they've stagnated is because listings have been gradually going up throughout winter. 
we have we didn't have a, re a regression in listings in winter, which we traditionally would have a regression in listings, in order for uh, for them to come back on or a, 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 in more in spring. So we're in the the first week of the spring season now. The first auction weekend will be for spring will be this this weekend coming, and and, and but what I've seen in the last uh, few weeks is that we've dropped, we've sort of. We've, it's, all, it's almost like the listings have stabilised. Now, I'm still expecting uh, a, a lot more to drop on because of the traditional um, yeah, beliefs that people have that spring is the best time to sell and they're preparing the homes for sale in winter. So it's going to be key for our viewers to keep an eye on the listing numbers, particularly the freestanding home uh, listing numbers that come on market. Uh, I look at them very, very closely and, and to see. So at the moment, we're tracking about... Uh, uh, eight, just uh, eight, just a bit over 8,100 uh, freestanding homes in Sydney, in the Sydney region, and uh, just over 18, um, just over 18,000 uh, overall listings for the Sydney region. But as I said, I, I'm very keen and looking, been, been keenly looking at the freestanding homes because that is that's just a whole different dynamic. That's just going to, uh, if we get up to 9,000 freestanding homes, I think it's just going to be. Uh, a, a game changer uh, again, uh, and anything above that, it is really going to put so much pressure, more pressure than what already is on the market. So, what's going to have what what's going to do that is effectively the properties that don't get sold at auction. Uh, keeping in mind that although the clearance rate say sixty seven percent, when you look at the actual numbers that got sold on the day was yeah you know, closer to eighty eight that got sold on the day. Uh, a few more got sold post uh, the day, and and another uh, 40, 60 uh, pre uh, pre Saturday's auction. Yeah, you know, got sold prior to 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 auction. So the numbers are reflecting, uh, yeah, you know, that the, that there's not really a lot of buyers out there. And secondly, the ones that are being sold, as we've just discussed, they're being sold for a lot less than what even what the guides are, what the real estate agents are guiding. And perhaps what the owners would have would have liked. So it's going to be an interesting dynamic. So I'm still I'm saying that we will get to 9,000 freestanding uh, listings at, in homes over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, I did call that that we would have that uh, <clears throat> two weeks ago. I was a little bit too uh, too optimistic on that, uh, but it's just. Yeah, you know, people are still adjusting with the dynamics. Um, another thing that I've noticed also is that uh, renovations, uh, the, the, the homes that are, are well prepared and well marketed are selling, and are, you know, uh, again, obviously a lot more more inspection though, because people don't want to don't want to go through the renovation thing uh, post purchase uh, because of simply because of the pressure that COVID and the social distancing has put on a lot of the trades as well. So I'm, I'm calling that we will have those numbers and we will have, I believe they'll ramp up fairly quickly. And the sleeper, of course, also, Edwin, is some of the banks are now beginning to put the acid on uh, owners and suggesting that perhaps they should actually bring their property to the market to avoid um, a financial disaster with regard to their mortgage. And we're certainly seeing more people now being, you know, encouraged is, is probably the right word, although some would say... Um, you know, heavy armed, um, because essentially the bank doesn't want to foreclose, but if they can persuade somebody who's got a mortgage that they can't necessarily repay to proactively go put the property on the market and to uh, sell it, um, do it quicker, you know, rather than slower, because the, the chances are prices will drift down. So that will be another reason why perhaps listings will rise. Well, yeah, if you look at the, as I said, if you, if you break down the numbers into simple, you know, simple numbers, we've got... Um, it's a, a an, on average eight and a half thousand freestanding homes for sale. There's um, uh, approximately six hundred suburbs in Sydney, so there's about twelve. That's about twelve listings uh, per suburb. All we need is a few more to come on, and 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 that's uh, I said uh, the buyers are, the, the buyers aren't uh, an increasing in volumes. They don't increase in volumes in spring, by the way. We've been diminishing you know in numbers, and and unfortunately, well, fortunately for the ones that are still standing uh, and that have that have held their you know uh, held their stands. Uh, is that they're going to have a lot more choice. Uh, there's going to be a lot more uh, asset poured on 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 the vendors uh, in spring, particularly if we do get the extra two or three. Two or three properties for sale in each suburb is not a lot, Martin. 
Mm. It's not a lot. Uh, when traditionally we were, we, yeah, we were looking at 11,000, 12,000, 13,000 freestanding homes for sale you know, on a weekly basis. Um, so we haven't even climbed back to where we were 18, 19, uh, 2018, 2019 figures, let alone 20, 2015, 2016, 17 figures, which were you know, closer to 15, 16,000. Um, and, and, and we've got this pressure. So there's a lot, there's a lot going to, um, uh, to unravel. Um, and, and again, well, we just um, encourage people to, um, you know, uh, give us a shout out when, uh, you know, on Twitter and that and, and let us know what's happening in the service so we can on share the, the post so that the greater public can see what's really going on. It's, look, you know, it's, uh, again, I say it's more to, it's better to be equipped and know what's, a, what, what's ahead so, it's, so that, yeah, you know, they, they can be better prepared because there's a lot of carnage coming up, Mark. I mean, it's it's going to be frightening and sad uh, to see a lot of these people, how they're going to get wiped out because they just um, pay too much attention to, to the hedonic and the, and the mainstream. <laughs> well, Edwin, uh, you know, the beauty of talking with you is you are def definitely there on the front line relaying directly what you're seeing and, of course, through your contacts, uh, being able to paint a very powerful picture of what's going on, and that's very valuable at the moment, as you say. So much uncertainty out there. So it's important people to listen to what you say and, uh, you know, file it away in their minds and make sure that they've actually got a more objective view of what's going on and not be reliant on just those high-level articles that, uh, you know, are trotted out for no real good reason other than just to fill space on the papers or in the, uh, on the web, web pages. Um, real data is important. It's hard to get. But in fact, um, you've got a good feel on what's going on. So thank you for your time today. We'll do the same again next week. And uh, we'll see what the um, index go, where, where the index goes and where well, yeah, the reality I've, goes. I've got, a, yeah, I've got a couple of uh, couple of properties that I'm following very closely. I'll, I'll, I'm hoping to share with, them, with, with, them, with our viewers that next week, uh, just to give you a bit of a taste. Uh, uh, three years ago, one was bought for um, uh, two million one hundred. Uh, I'm waiting for it to be to to be exchanged, and the exchange looks like it's going to happen at one point eight million. And another property that uh, got bought oh, three two and a half years ago for for two point seven million, and the owner it got passed in that auction at two point two, and the owner will take two point three. So I'm waiting for those to to actually be transacted so we can bring them live and, and say that they've actually sold so that we can have something concrete. So I'm hoping to bring this, the, these uh, nuggets out from uh, on our shows on a, on a weekly basis and let the viewers know what, what happens out there on the, on the ground, Martin. Yeah, well, and, and I'll try, change, my, change my haircut, as my, my hair do every week as well, just to keep people guessing. <laughs> well, perhaps they can make a suggestion as what, what style they'd like to see, Edwin. You know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but look, the point, the point is this, that you know and I know that prices are on the slide, that many deals are only being done at lower levels than, than the market is really wanting to admit at the moment. And so the more evidence that we can bring of that, uh, and, and people will accuse us of cherry picking, but, you know, one swallow might make a summer. But if you see a whole flock of swallows, you know you've definitely got a summer. And I would argue that there's enough data out there to demonstrate that things are on the slide. So we'll keep talking about it. We'll keep so, posting about it. So what was that? One swallow makes a what? Makes a... A summer. Uh, 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 oh, I was thinking, yeah, one frog makes uh, just makes a... Makes just, yeah, one shish kebab. And, uh, you know, and, and 50 frog makes a banquet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just goes you come from a different part of the world edwin i can tell <laughs> thanks for your time today we'll keep in touch and we'll do this again next week see ya sounds great Bye. looking forward to it man.